prior to um, the military. It could be related to some post-traumatic stress that he's experiencing. Thousands forced to evacuate and firefighters desperate to contain the flames. Authorities say he admitted to shooting and killing four strangers, including an infant, and injuring an 11-year-old while high on methamphetamine. Mental health-related emergency department visits were higher 24%. Over 800,000 COVID-related deaths have been reported in the U.S. since the start of the pandemic. I'm on. Ah! Yes, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. You better clean that out first. You know what I'm doing. I don't need to tell you that this pandemic has hit law enforcement and emergency personnel hard in the last year. Even for us type A guys in the firehouse. Each and every one of us had to question our career, our faith. Because for the first time in our lives, we didn't know what we were up against. Hey, Max, they've already started. They're out in the bay. We're the ones who are supposed to save lives. At the beginning of this pandemic, hell, We'd take a patient to the hospital, and there wasn't one person there who knew how to help him keep breathing. But Gabriel Rodriguez, he was a hero. In every sense of the word, Gabe wasn't in it for the paycheck. It was his life's mission. And it didn't matter what the call, a multiple car crash on 75, or a migrant mother giving birth in a strawberry field, or putting on his PPE and rushing in to help the people of this town dying of COVID. COVID. We lost too many of our own. We lost Gabriel Rodriguez. This is a terrible loss to his family, to his beautiful wife and love of his life, Maxine, to our family. Gabe was the son I never had. And that's why I'm honored to present Gabriel Rodriguez with Paramedic Firefighter of the Year.
I think this is just about all of it. What's this? New program, help out law enforcement. I'm gonna hire a social worker to ride with a paramedic, take some of the nonviolent behavioral health calls we get with some of the kids. I'll put this in your car for you, where you parked. You have that many kids in crisis? Kidding me? We've got four times the mental illness we had two years ago. And it gets worse every goddamn minute. Excuse my language. Which car? Oh, it's this one over here. Sounds like a good program. Could be. Problem is, we can't get anybody to take the job. And we've only got six months to prove it'll work. Maybe I should apply. <laughs> I'm serious. Look, there's a reason why we can't get anyone to take the job but pay 16 bucks an hour and you're dealing with all kinds of kids on the worst day of their lives. I think I would be perfect for it. Why would you want a job like that when I'm you're... I'm a school psychologist. This is not about some kid crying over a failed test. I think I know exactly what it's about. Look, all we want, and I can speak for your husband Gabe if he were here, is to protect our families from all the crap we deal with all the time. We leave it at the station. We don't bring it home to the wife and kids. You don't think Gabe brought it home? And that's exactly why you can't take the job. Gabe wouldn't have wanted you to. Well, he's not here, is he? Everything I love is gone. You expect me to go back to working at the high school like none of this ever happened? So freaking handsome in this uniform. You like that, huh? I do. Wouldn't you like to go at it with the firemen all night long? <laughs> oh, but you're gonna be so busy, I'm never gonna see you. As if anything can keep me from you. Maybe now we can think about.
about having a baby, huh? Oh, but I just started my new job. You can quit your job. <laughs> I'm gonna give us more time to start a family. I'm so proud of you. I want you on stage with me tonight. I'm gonna get my pledge. I hope I can remember it. I'm so nervous. Come on, I've heard you say it so many times I could do it myself. I promise courage, the courage to face and conquer my fears. I promise strength, strength of heart, to deliver all those to safety who are placed within my care. Oh, Max, <laughs> what did you do? Open it. It's a compass, so you can always find your way back home. Go on an observation ride tonight. Graveyard shift. After that, if you still want to apply, I won't stop it. Uh, okay, what time should I be there? Midnight, at the station. You'll ride with Jake Monroe. Uh, what should I bring? Just what be there at midnight. Drink this. You're gonna need it. Only thing out of this time of that are cops, cabs, and criminals. Is that your release? Mm. That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, Max Toussaint, 30 years old, licensed LMSW, master's degree from UCLA. Wow. Long way from home. What are you doing on here in Florida? Well, I like the heat, I guess. You think this is a joke? No. I knew your husband. By the way, Gabe. He was a decent dude. MIT one, go ahead. We have a 415 at 647 for you at 1437 Arlington Road. 16 year old boy, mentally unstable. Neighborhood disturbance. All right, copy that. All right, let's roll. Like right now? In the car, yep. You're just on as a civilian observer. That means you shut up, listen, and do what you're told, all right? You don't need to get hurt over anything stupid. So how long you been on the night shift? Night shift? <laughs> oh, I'm in my T 24-7. I get a few hours of sleep every now and then, but I mean, I can average up to 16 calls a day. Wow. What the hell do you want to be on MRT for anyway? I just want to know why you risk your lives to help people. So it is about your husband. Look, if you have a problem with me being here, you should just say so right now, because that's how it feels. MRT-1, switch to channel two. Channel two, copy. Law enforcement delayed, are you clear to handle? MRT-1, it's a 1015. We should uh, be here. Oh my gosh! Scene secure is on the way, but this is just some kid off of some meds. You should probably stay here. No, I'm come with you. Them? Have you seen them? They've been, they've been driving up and down the street all day taking photos of the Henry, houses. We've they've been, been driving. Over this. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. Have you seen this? Look, I don't know. No, about I, this I, 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 I don't know. No, Just I, I, look at the No, message, I hate that Mom. cell phone. All the politics and conspiracy oh. theorists. No, 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 honey, 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 honey. Did you even take the pills I gave you? Mom, it is not about politics anymore. Both sides okay. are being manipulated, okay? 
figure that all out last night, okay? They think I'm some sort of spy who is onto them and their whole stupid fucking hoax. And Google my name. Google my name anywhere. And I pop up next to all of these celebrities and athletes and fucking Russians because they're all in on it, okay? Go on any page, any page, and find me. And I know but I am nobody. Fucking goes, Mom. Okay, okay, it's okay. in the TV. Okay. It's in the phones. It's everywhere. They have ears everywhere. Okay? And it's all connected. They're outside. They're right outside on the driveway. They told me not to trust you. No, this. Are you, are you hearing voices in your head? Of course, fucking. Okay. What's your name? You only want to know my name so you can track me. Henry. <laughs> no, 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 Henry, Henry, Do please. You know my name. It's Miss Dusan from school. Please, from before the pandemic. Please, I was your counselor and you came to my office and we would talk. Please, Henry, Miss Dusan. Do you remember? Oh, okay. drop the knife. Hey, no. drop the knife, kid. Back! Drop no, the knife. No. Stay drop back! No. Right. Don't you shoot! Hey, we're not here to hurt you, okay? It's okay. Jake, it's okay. Henry, please, pretend the knife will only hurt you. Drop the knife. Drop your weapon! Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Drop your weapon! Put your hands up! 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 It's okay, you drop the weapon! Get on your knees! No! No! He's just a kid! No! No! I thought we were there to calm the situation down. Why did you call the police? Why, I, I don't know, Max. Maybe because um, he had a knife to your neck? I was handling it. Yeah. I could have fixed this. I could have... You could have gotten yourself killed, Max. He was not going to hurt me. Oh, yeah. How do you know that? I just know. All right, well, couldn't take that chance. So if you don't mind, I'm going to fill this out, explain this mess. Well, is he going to be okay? Where are they taking him right now? I, I don't know. Maybe the hospital, the... Check him out and then CSU probably. What's CSU? Crisis stabilization at the psych ward. Yeah, not the happiest place in town. Henry used to come into my office all the time. Kid's an absolute genius. He's always coming up with these theories on how to save the planet. He's not a criminal. He just needs his medication. He needs therapy and the right treatment plan. I really think we should go to the hospital. I want to talk to the police, and I want to be with his mother. She's probably freaking out right now. Can we go? You're going to be a problem, aren't you? Being a police officer today is tougher than any time I've seen. The fact is, we're not social workers. What the hell is she 
We spent about six months learning how to shoot a gun and about six hours on mental health. We need your help. Since the pandemic, 911 calls concerning mental health in this community are up over 200%. We're seeing depression, anxiety, suicide, drug use, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder. In this training, you will learn how to spot and treat all these behaviors. At the conclusion of the six weeks, one of you will be selected to join the mobile crisis response team. You were supposed to scare her off. Not recruit her for the team. I don't know. I think she's got what we need, Chief. Instinct, I guess. Yeah, well, this is on you then. What I see is her piling trauma on top of trauma. How do you know she won't break? Under the influence of narcotics. 1051. Subject is drunk. <laughs> A suicide attempt. Oh. Ma, why are you calling me? It is one o'clock in the morning. I always forget what time the time difference. What are you doing up so late, baby? I'm working. No, I'm training for a new job. What kind of job? I'm working with the fire department as a social worker. <laughs> fire department? You can't work for fire. No, Mom, it's fine, really. This is the most awake I've felt in months. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. I was thinking about with Gabe gone and all, now that, no, no, listen, listen to me. With Gabe gone, you should think about moving back to home to California. And, and, and I can use your help. Why, what's wrong? Are you drinking again? No, no, don't start up with me like that about again. I can't believe I make one little phone call and you're already accusing no, me. I'm not, I'm not accusing you of anything. Everybody's Jeez, always I, blaming I, me. And I'm, I, look, I'm doing Ma, the best I'm, I can. I gotta go. I My phone is about to die, actually. So I'm gonna, I'll check in with you tomorrow. Max. All right, love you. Bye. Over the course of this training, make sure to get plenty of sleep. Eat a healthy diet, exercise, pray, meditate, whatever it takes to calm yourself down. Right, because what we're learning is emotional regulation. Not only for your clients, but maybe even more important, for yourselves. Every firefighter spends at least one hour on physical fitness during an eight-hour shift. Now, your body is your weapon, your mind is your strength. You gotta learn to use all your senses. Sight, hearing, touch, smell, taste. Perhaps your most important sense is your sixth sense. If something doesn't feel right, you must determine whether you need an exit plan. Your ways of aggress. No matter where you respond, figure out your escape. Your life to literally depend on it. You wanted to see me, Chief? Hi, Max. Come in. Have a seat. How's the training going? It's going great. I'm learning a lot, feeling ready. I want to get out there. Gabe would have been proud of you. I remember the day you two got married. The whole station house was there. We were laughing and dancing and carrying on. I went up to him to congratulate him at the bar. He was looking at you out there on the dance floor, and he says, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. So why'd you let him die, Chief? Your 
dismissed. Max. Stop by HR on the way out, fill out the paperwork. You start Monday. I got the job? For six months. Nobody else finished the training. over here is the number one rated beach in the whole U.S. After midnight, though, it's a different story. We have a request for mental health. 1071 at 2107 Morning Dove Road, Sunrise Key. 14-year-old female having mental health crisis. Code 4. Not what I was expecting for my first day. Yeah, well, don't be fooled by the money. I'd take a call from North County or the zip code any day of the week. Why is that? Do you know what you've done? Do you know? OK, the cops are here, Veronica. Look what I had to do. Thank God you're here. Come in, quick. Would you please hurry up? I've called the police. They're taking you to school. I could care less if you think I am a fucking bitch. You're going to school. I cannot get her to go to school. I can't. So you two are going to take her. She is completely out of control. Ma'am, ma we're not the police. We're what do you mean you're not the police? You look like the police. Okay, ma'am, one second. Is that your daughter you're talking to up there? Yeah, she's my daughter. OK, well, if she's not going to come down, do I have your permission to go up and speak with her? I could care less what you do. I'm exhausted. just like this when I was a kid. My mom found him shivering in a cage in Mexico. All I needed was a little bit of love. Isn't that right? <laughs> she puts these stupid bows in his hair and everyone thinks he's a girl. It's so annoying. What's his name? Fluff. <gasps> Fluff? He is such a sweet fluff, isn't he? You're the first person who I've ever seen him be nice to. He's scared. No way. You know, I read somewhere that dogs have the feelings of a two-year-old child. Isn't that something? Seriously? Mm. Look at that. See how he loves you? Are you here to take me to Gulfside? Well, I don't know. It depends. Do you feel like you need to go to the hospital? I mean, it would get me out of this place. Why do you want to leave here? I'm like a walking TikTok disorder. So what's going on today? Do you know why your mom called 911? I mean, usually when people call us, it's because they're really worried. Can I ask you a question? How long have you been cutting? I mean, something must be bothering you for you to hurt yourself like that. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Did you pick that? That's beautiful. Yeah, it's called Girl on Fire. Girl on Fire. Yeah? Hey, my name's Jake. Do you mind if I come in? Is my mom hitting on you? No, she's just um, worried about you is all. So how can I help? 
I guess I sort of cut myself. Can I take a look? It's okay. It looks like it really hurt. Not, not really. So how come you weren't at school today? I've got more friends online than I do in that stupid school. Whenever they look at me, all they see are my scars. Your scars do not define you. And from a medical perspective, I know, I know self-harm feels like it helps in the moment, but it doesn't. It's addictive, it escalates. It very dangerous. Trust me, I've seen it. I hate for you to really hurt yourself. Maybe I'll go talk to her. Did she tell you what a horrible mother I am? Are you aware of the cuts on Veronica's arms? <laughs> Please. All the teenage girls are doing it. Hell, I even did it when I was a teenager. I'd recommend you take her down to Gulfside for an evaluation. Gulfside? Mm. You mean the mental hospital? <laughs> oh my god. She has you completely fooled. You don't know her. Look, she's just looking for attention. Ma'am, those cuts are pretty deep, and they're right next to her radial artery. My husband will kill me if she ends up in there. You'd be surprised how many important people need mental health services these days. Focus on your daughter right now. She's just a kid. Yes, they're about 10 minutes out. Mother and daughter. They're on their way. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah, that very concerned mother offered me a Bloody Mary and asked if she could feel my abs. <laughs> yeah, make sure you put that in the report. Oh, I will. Hey, you want to get some coffee? Actually, I think we should swing by Gulfside, too, just to make sure that Max, the in. job here at Mobile Rescue is to take care of the immediate issue, point them to some resources, move them to the next phase. All right, it's actually quite liberating. <laughs> Don't have to feel anything about them. How do you not feel anything? MRT1. Jake Monroe, you copy? MRT1, go ahead. Switch over to channel 4, 1023. Copy that. We have a code 2. Police in need of mental health roadside at 2134 Tiangelo Avenue. We have a 1067 on a 1056A. 22-year-old male, 417. MRT1 en route. Put the weapon down and come out of the car with your hands up. Put the weapon down, sir. Drop the weapon! Drop the weapon! Drop the weapon! Just shoot me, goddammit! Just go ahead and shoot me! Tell me something, dude. Are you a vet? How did you know? Look in your eyes, man. I could always tell. Don't do this to another vet. Look, I want to help you, man, but not like this. Listen to me. I I'm a retired army guy. I'm a vet like you. Don't make me do this. Just put it down, brother. We lost too many already. Just put the weapon down. Cause trouble. Hey, you're doing the right thing here. Thank you for trusting me. This is Jake. He's a good guy. He's going to talk to you for a minute if that's okay. All right, I got to ask you a few questions if that's all right. What's your name? Bo. All right, Bo, you on any drugs or medication? I've been drinking and taking pills for 
in about a week, I guess. Oh, I see so many vets on the street out here. Yeah, half the time we can't respond to a burglary in progress because we're dealing with one mental health crisis after another. I can't sleep. I can't, I can't stop the images in my head. I was in the exact same headspace that you're in right now not too long ago. Oh, that's a lonely place, man. I was going to end it. I was going to end all this shit. Sucked. You vet, where'd you serve? Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Three years. We were handing out candy, did some shit to a group of kids, and a landmine went off. I see my buddy blow up right next to me. His brain fucking coming out of his skull. Kids screaming. Boy, you got PTSD. Well, that's what this is. Doesn't make you less of a man, all right? Hey, we're gonna get you some help. Okay, we're gonna take you to CSU. Rehab, detox, EMDR, what do you say? No, I, I can't stand being Oh, look at me, look at me, hey. I'll let you make the choice, man, but I promise you, you're gonna get more help there, okay? All right, you need to um, use my phone. No. I don't want my dad to know. All right. Yeah. I heard what you said to him back there. About what? What do you mean? Said something about ending things. I was just talking to him. Doing the job, building rapport. Okay, Jake. Up out there on the water. Couldn't get enough. Swimming, surfing, <laughs> hang out at the edge of the boat while we zoomed in and out of the canals, explored the islands. I used to love that shit. You used to? MRT-1, we need a better name for our team. Hell on wheels? MRT-1, copy, standing by. You requested Sunview High School, ACD 1085-1. Sunview? Didn't even finish my power bar. I did not even recognize you when you got here. What are you doing here? New job. Wow. <laughs> you look, I don't know, so different. Hey, um, I was really sorry to hear about Gabe. He was, did you call us about a student? Yes. Caitlin Morris, she's in my office. Well, I don't need to show you where that is. You know, it was really insane after you left. School was closed, and then isolation, and forget about all the other changes going on in their lives. The kids have been anxious, depressed, fighting, suicidal. Well, what's going on today? I don't even know. She won't talk to me. Are the parents on the way? We've been trying to reach them for an hour. Plus, I've got four other kids in the nurse's office with anxiety. Um, 
I'm gonna just tell her you're coming in, okay? All right. You used to work here? Yeah. <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin, honey. <laughs> Miss Toussaint is here to talk with you. She's a... Uh... She's here to help you, okay? <laughs> Caitlin, I'm just gonna leave her here with you for a few minutes while I call your mom and dad again. Hey, Caitlin. I'm sorry you're feeling sad today. You take all the time you need, okay? It's okay. It's okay. You know, I used to work at this school before the pandemic. Nice to be back. <laughs> Missed all the wide open spaces. The jacaranda trees in the spring. I like seeing all the students in their backpacks. My dad died of COVID yesterday. How could a person you love all your life be there one minute and the next just disappear? When we brought him to the hospital, they just wheeled him off down the hall and they shut the doors in our face. I'm so sorry, honey. I'm so sorry. No, I can't take the pain away. <laughs> but I can be here with you while you feel it. It's okay to feel it. It's okay. It's okay. Just breathe. Are you all right? Thank you for taking care of my daughter. Oh, of course. Don't feel like you have to go through this grief alone. I'll call you this afternoon with some of those resources, okay? okay. Take care, honey. Strong. I can't believe she sent her daughter to school without telling us her husband died. We should have been notified immediately. They're probably still in shock. Well, I was thinking, um, a group of us girls are going to the tap room on Friday night like the old days. You should come. I'll probably be wiped out from this week, but I really do appreciate it. Okay, yeah, thank you. Good seeing you, bye. You doing okay? Yeah. Hey, you did a good job back there, by the way. Think so? Chief was worried about you joining the team. <laughs> Said it was piling trauma on top of trauma. Can I give you some advice? Okay. 
can grow cynical about the world. Think that this is all there is. I don't know, just don't lose your regular friends. I don't have any regular friends. I just feel like the whole school is just having this collective mental breakdown. Oh, honestly, I make a mistake every single day. I oh. had a parent literally threaten to punch me in the face two what? weeks ago. Oh man, how are we ever gonna get through this year? I don't know. Alcohol helps. Mm -hmm. To alcohol. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. I think this gets better with age. <laughs> mm. Oh my god, Max. Max! Over hey. here. <laughs> you came! <laughs> Great. Great. Back <laughs> together again. Oh, Amy said you were at school on Monday. Yeah, it was. You're doing what exactly? <laughs> uh, mental health with the fire department? Yeah. That is just so crazy. Oh, that guy you were with is so hot. Oh my god. Oh. Well, he is right. Oh. You guys should have seen him. <laughs> okay, miss. this girl needs a drink. We are gonna just forget about life for one night and get wasted. I Ubered here. Uh, <laughs> Danny, can we get like a, a whole new bottle? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> How are you doing, really? Mm. I've been meaning to call you for the longest time. Uh, I'm all right. I, you know, I just started this new job, so. Um, we were really sorry to hear about Gabe. Um, I wanted to come to the funeral, but with COVID and all, I... We don't need to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> What's everybody doing this weekend? Oh my gosh, wait. I started going to the gym oh, and you guys yeah. should join me uh, uh, I love yeah. that. uh after yeah. tonight um i basically quit working out during the entire pandemic same oh. hey, then come like okay they have this thing called wine and wiggles on saturday nights at seven they say that that helps the more you work out the more well, wine definitely helps <laughs> Max, aren't you sick of me by now? Well, Max, hey. I should have called. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, wait. Hey, hey, you hung up? Yeah. What's going on? 
I feel like I have... <laughs> I got a weight on my chest. I can't breathe, Jake. Uh, where are you at? Are you at home? No. I'm... I'm in the bathroom. I'm in the bathroom in the stupid bar. Okay, do you know what stupid bar? Um, uh, tap, tap room. I'm in the tap room at Madison. Okay. Okay, I'll be there in two minutes. No, no, it's okay. No, Jake, it's fine. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, remember, breathe in through the nose, long on the out breath, slow and steady till I get there, okay? <laughs> Hey, restroom? Just down this hallway to look. Thanks. <laughs> I told you not to come. The breathing out. And the wine out. Well, it's not the most comfortable seat in the bar, but I don't mind. Do you want some? Oh, no, I um, quit after the divorce. You know, before COVID, I used to do these girls' nights out with Amy and the other chicks from the high school. And we'd all end up getting too drunk. And I'd have to have Gabe come and get me. I can take you home if you want. No. Oh. I think I'll just stay right here on the floor until I leave. What if we just use a service exit? <laughs> I don't even know where that is. Come on, you don't remember the rules of egress? Mm. When you're in a room, always look for your way. Always look for your way. You got this. Your ways to escape. Yeah. Storage room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it leads to the back alley. Yeah, if there was a fire in here, I'd take him out through the storage closet. Or even came up the stairs, the top floor, out the window. I used to have this crazy idea that I'd sneak into County Memorial unhook Gabe's ventilator and put him in my car and I just drive far away. I take him to a point of rocks so I could feel the wind and just breathe that salty air. Take that bottle? No, I got it. Yeah, you got it, yeah. Okay. Here we go. All right. Okay, let's be careful. Be careful. You rescue you guys. I was trying to be the hero. <laughs> Front door open. Oh, 
I'll get it. I'll get it later. All right. Uh, Where's the room? Right. It's this way. This way. And then that way. And then this way. Come on, all right. Oh, I'm flying. <laughs> You're flying. Yeah. Yeah. Almost then there. Flying. Okay. I'll put you down. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh. And I'm flying through the air. Oh. Thank you for the rescue, Mr. Fireman. You're welcome. Ah. 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 It's hot. Oh. All right. Um, get some sleep, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Good night, Gabe. Night, Max. Did I just call him Gabe? <laughs> I'm glad he brought you home. I wanted to call you. I'm sorry I couldn't be there, baby. I miss you. I see the way he looks at you. I didn't notice. Oh, you didn't notice. Are you jealous? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's been nine months. One of these days, you're going to start seeing other guys. You just say that corny thing you used to say to me. No, you used to make fun of me all the time for Say it. My well, love is so strong, even the angels are jealous. You just hold me like you used to. I figured you need a ride to work. Where is my car? Um, still at the tap room, I imagine. Oh. How you feeling? Well, like my brain has been replaced with broken glass. Thank you. You remember calling me? Oh, God. I'm... All right, well, we gotta get moving. We got a call from North County already, and we gotta make a stop on the way, so. Hey, well, give me a moment. I always forget my sunglasses for work. The world is extra bright today. You know, you've had a hell of a year, Max. It's not too late to back out. If you... I'm not backing out. I'm just saying that whatever it is you're trying to hide from always finds you in the morning. Hey, didn't you say not to forget about my regular friends? was me, wasn't it? <laughs> What's going on here? Figured you might want to say hi to Henry. His mom called this morning, said they'd bring him over here to see you. Cards, huh? How about a game of poker for old time's sake? You up for it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I heard they have you on a new med. You feeling any better? 
No. It just makes me tired, really. Yeah, it can take a couple of weeks for your body to adjust to a new medication. Let's see. I think you beat me. What do you have? Two sevens. <laughs> Full house. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. I don't, honestly, I don't know how that worked out either. <laughs> Okay. I did know you didn't have anything, though, because you gave it away on your face. You're not supposed to give anything away on your face. You have to have, like, a, like a poker face, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't fake it with you. Even in a card game. You know, talk to your mom. She misses you so much. Henry, the more you stick to the schedule, take your meds, the quicker you can go home and be out of this place. Okay? Tell you what, I will come back and see you soon, and we'll play some more poker, because I got a lot to learn. Mr. Toussaint. Yeah. I'm sorry about the night. I know. Until next time, my friend. I want to find out what medicines they have him on. Jake, that soldier they brought in yesterday, Bo Harris, he's gone. What do you mean? I mean, somehow they mistakenly let him go. Between you and me, we don't have any beds, and we lost a third of our staff. We called golf side, but the kid doesn't have any insurance. Nobody wants him. What about the father? He won't return our calls. Cops are going to be all over his ass. What the hell do you mean, reallocated? Okay, this is disgusting, <laughs> but I needed it. I call it the Irishman's breakfast. I don't care anything. And Gabe actually used to make me. That's funny. No, Gabe used to what? Well, Gabe used to make me a big breakfast like this after a night out. Hmm. He had me taking all these vitamins and my fruits and vegetables and all that crap. He wanted me to have a baby. Is that what you wanted? Anyway, <laughs> tell me about your ex. <laughs> What's there to know? Well, why did you break up? I was a rescue diver. Yeah. Uh, you know, rescue and retreat, and usually dead people from lakes, canals, Gulf of Mexico after an accident. I love the work. It was important and necessary. It gets to you after a while. You know, all the shit you see in the water. And what kind of shit? Seven arms. Shark eating a corpse. Bad shit. Sneaks up on you when you're least expecting it. I, I came home one night and... Well, I got a little lost. Is that why you quit diving? I didn't quit. Uh, More work.
got a new name for our team. <laughs> oh, yeah? Compass. MRT-1, go ahead. You're needed at North Shore Public Beach, access 7. We have a 1056A attempted suicide, possible drowning of a 10-year-old girl, lifeguard at the scene, mother needs assistance. Do you copy? MRT, copy, en route. <laughs> Five to seven minutes. What? Five to seven minutes. That's how long you have underwater until brain damage kicks in. Talk to me for a second? Yeah. Yeah? Why'd you go out in the water, man? I don't like it here. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can call the ambulance. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm gonna leave you here with him, okay? You gonna take care of you, all right? All right, man, I'm gonna go talk to your mom real quick, okay? Yeah. Okay. Oh, down, take good, good, good. Right, let's go fast. Okay, we're gonna call an ambulance, take her to the hospital. She, she needs to be doesn't evaluated. need to go to the hospital. My ex-husband would use that against me. Man, you're not listening after what she's been through. She I am going. telling you that my daughter is not going to the hospital. You don't understand. She Please. understands. Right. You understand. Yeah, let's just do what Miss Jackson says, okay? She'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. I'll check in on the family later today. Okay. Hey, why didn't you let me take her to the hospital? You know the protocol. Because she's obviously okay. She's likely suicidal. She's alert. She's talking normally. Like, if the parents don't want us to take her, we have no legal right to do so. What's going on with you? Nothing is going on with me. All right, look, if you got a problem, you gotta talk to me, all right? We can't be partners if you don't tell me what the hell's going on. Max. Her mom had alcohol on her breath. I smelled it as soon as I met her. If we take the daughter to the hospital, they're gonna claim parental neglect and they're probably gonna take her away. Okay, maybe so, but that's not your problem. Yeah, but it is my problem, Jake. This is something that I've seen my entire life. Jesus, Max, stop making everything about you. 
Focus on the people we're trying to help. <laughs> Maybe Chief was right, yeah. Maybe you're not tough enough for this job. Okay, I'm not tough enough for this job? Okay, what the hell is that supposed to mean? Why did you quit rescue diving, Jake? So I can't tell you one thing personal about me and what's going on with my life without you throwing it in my face? You said it yourself. One more minute, and that girl would have died. Wow, that's rich, yeah. You know, you've been giving me shit since the first day we met. What is it, Max? You think if you magically save the world by yourself while your husband's just gonna come back? Well, he's dead. Move on. Max! Max, get back in the car. Max, I didn't mean it, all right? Can you please get back in the car? I'm sorry. Please get back in the car. is bipolar. I swore I would never be like her. I never wanted to have a baby. And then I met Gabe and he was just wonderful. And he always wanted to have a family. He kept pressing me about having a baby and I just, I was afraid. He's gone, and it's too late. What's up, Chief? Jake, I need to see you and Max in my office as soon as you can get here. Yeah, I'll be there. of all the paramedics ranked by classification and higher dates on my desk in an hour. No, just get me the list. I'll take it from there. And keep this confidential. Jake, Max, have a seat. Hey, Chief. How's she working out? Oh, pretty good. Pain in the ass most of the time, but... Hey. I mean, all kidding aside, she's, she's doing good, she, she's on. She's a natural. That's good to hear, good to hear. Well, since you asked us in here, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you about some ideas that I have. I want to start a support group for the firemen and the EMTs. A group? You know anything about this group? For our own people, I mean, just like we do with the MRT, but on the inside. Oh, wait a minute. I mean, I've been doing research, and I can't believe the trauma levels and suicide levels of our own first responders. First of all, the last thing in the world any of our people need to be doing is talking about their feelings. It doesn't work, and we don't want it. See that? Anybody walks into my office and says they don't handle their feelings, can't take the stress of this job, I say, apply there. Selbergers. Now, I was the one who called this meeting, so I believe I'm still a chief. I need you all to settle down and let me talk. I got some bad news. The city called, and your program funds are being reallocated at the end of the month. Well, what do you mean, reallocated? Wiped out. The city's strapped because of COVID and cutbacks. Well, to tell you the truth, it's not just the MRT. I'm going to lose paramedics, too. So, Jake, I need you back on the diving team. Your little break here is over. The diving team? 
Max, I mean, what does that there's mean? no sugar coating it. The program's going to be canceled, and I'm going to have to let you go at the end of the month. We're just getting started. I know. It's disappointing to me, too. You cut this program, I'll walk. Oh, please. I mean it. Are you threatening me, fireman? Jake. Jake. Get back in here, Jake. Jake. Jake, wait. What are you doing? What? You heard him. It's over. We have two more weeks. Yeah. Can we finish this out at least? I'm done, OK? I'm, I'm sorry. So you're just going to quit? You're going to leave me here to deal with all of this shit by myself? Enough. The man wants me back in the water. Okay, he's been pushing me and pushing me to get back in the diving team. The truth is, I'd rather kill myself. Been looking for you. Do I know you? Yeah, Max. We met last week with Jake and Officer Harris. Oh, yeah. Well, I heard that you got released from CSU. Are you... Where are you staying? Are you with your dad? Oh, no, he, he kicked me out. Wait. Bo, we can help you. You're a nice person. Stay away from downtown. What are you doing? Oh. Dispatch, we have a 1032. Army vet, PTSD headed toward downtown. Gray SUV license plate, PTL 728. Please respond. Four units say the gunman is a veteran of the war in Afghanistan. He had an AR-15 that was East Forces surrounded and took him into custody. Sheriff Morris said in a news conference that Mr. Harris was experiencing symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder and was wearing camouflage when he was approached. America is in the midst of a spike in gun violence without recent precedent. Give me a meeting with the mayor tomorrow morning. Tell him it's urgent. Max? Dispatch calling MRT2. Do you copy? Uh, yeah. yeah. We have a possible suicide threat on Skywalk Bridge. Officer standing by. Need a Do you copy? Uh, copy. Wait, uh, no response from MRT1, Jake Monroe? MRT1 not responding. Officer needed a distance now. Are you clear? Do you copy? Uh, uh Copy, I'll be right there. Every time I approach, she climbs a little higher. So, you know, I figured I better give you people a try here. Where's Jake? I don't know. I've got both sides of the sidewalk clear. If she jumps, there's a police boat and a rescue diver standing by, but 
The impact alone's gonna break her, especially if she hits that fender below. I'm going in. here to help you. I care, and I just want to help. My name is Max. What's your name? The only thing that will help is if I jump. Hey, you're scaring me. Just, just come on down and talk with me, please. People everywhere <laughs> gasping for air. Code Red. I can see her through the glass, and they've intubated her, but I know she's not going to make it. I can always tell. I'm pulling on my PPE and just saying, hold on, ma'am, I'm coming, just hold on a little longer. But I didn't make it. <laughs> the nurse, the nurse cares for her patients. I didn't make it in time. You know, two months ago, I was standing in this exact same spot, right where you are. It's true. My husband died of COVID. He died in my arms. That's the first time I've ever been able to say that out loud. And for months, I, I couldn't accept it. I missed him so much, so I came to this bridge right here, and I... You're gonna jump? Believe it or not, a car honked at me. It scared the shit out of me. It woke me up out of this fog, out of my head. And I could just smell the ocean. Feel the wind on my face. And I realized I want to live. That there's still something for me to live for. So I climbed down and I walked to the other side of the bridge. Why don't you come on down? Take my hand. I can help you. Is this the right spot? <laughs> Took you long enough. Uh, yeah, well, I wasn't cut out for flipping burgers, so. I just, I... All right, uh, how the hell do we do this? Well, I think Chief was right. Nobody wants to talk about these things, so. Yeah. I didn't know I was called on this. <laughs> Hey, P, you made it. Thank you, Doc. Yeah, I brought Eric. Hey, man. You're buying beers afterwards, right? <laughs> I, I guess. <laughs> That's a pizza. <laughs> OK. You guys want a max? OK. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I, uh, I just want to say that I have a deep respect for each and every one of you and the jobs that you do. And I guess what I want most out of this is for you to feel that you have the support and resources that you need to be able to do your job. 
How about some ground rules? What are some values that we all share to make this a safe space? Well, I guess there's a stigma around us not sharing these types of things, so um, I suppose just understanding that it's um, hard. I don't know. I mean, like someone said, it's, it's heavy. We're firefighters. And if we're seen talking with you, you'd be seen as weak, unfit for duty. I like to keep my personal stuff private, you know? Ground rules, I suppose. Um, you know, whatever issues anybody talks about in here, we want to throw in their faces or anything like that. Um, yeah, but we're not here to judge. Uh, it's a safe space. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. Can we all agree on that? It is a lot. I mean, you guys are here to be brave save people on the worst days of their lives. But what happens afterward? What do you mean? When you leave here and go home to your families. Well, I guess my, um, my ex-wife wouldn't sleep in the same bed as me because of the, the nightmares. Made having sex kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, um, one of my last dives, I was swimming through the dark waters of the canal and I can just make out the, the car below me. And uh, I see this woman's blonde hair just floating through the, the sunroof, nearly touches my fin. I move in and this, um, this fucking snake-like thing like wraps around my belt and it's the fucking movement. And I guess, I, I don't remember, but I apparently I screamed like a motherfucker because they, they heard me all the way up in the boat. <laughs> It was the windshield wipers from the, from the car. Yeah, the battery's still running. Yeah, it clipped onto my belt. Um, yeah, Max, you, uh, you have enough of those and you, um, you take it home. I know for me being a female firefighter, I feel like I have to hold it all in, prove I'm tough enough, but then I go home and take it out on my kid. You know, it's the sadness, the sadness that gets to me. Yeah. Uh, Sadness is just seeing too much. I was fine at work, but it's, you know, when you come home and you're alone. I never told anybody about it. I had, um, I bowed out to um, a sinkhole in Kativa, um, 90 feet to the rim, 300 feet down. And I think I'm just gonna disappear. I'd dive down as deep as I can. I'm not gonna leave a note, I'm not gonna leave anything. And I would go until I ran out of air. And yeah, I'd just never come up and, and that would be it. Yeah. Pete, you say something, man. <laughs> then you get the kindling effect, just like a fire. The longer you let it go, without dealing with it, the bigger it grows. You people still here? Hey, hey Chief. Chief. I was just about to turn out the lights. We were just finishing up some things around here. Do you want to come join us? Oh, no, I'm heading out. Please, have a seat. Oh, what the hell. I guess I can spend a few minutes with you. So, what are you all talking about? Well, we're actually talking about our toughest days on the job. Hmm. Do you want to share yours? Toughest day on the job? Mm-hmm. Hurricane Irma. I was working rescues all night, and when I got home, my home was underwater. And uh, the firehouse was without power. Uh, Toughest day on the job. I guess, uh, I guess that would be when I got the call that Gabe wasn't coming home. That got to me. Got to you how? Like it was my fault. Yeah, I'm chief. I'm, my job is to make sure that everybody's honor and safety is protected. Uh, I, uh, 
I couldn't. <laughs> Chief, we spend 24 hours a day together. We literally talk about everything. But not this. Like suicide? Or Manny? And Dom. This is PTSD we're talking about. Just like in a war zone. Except it's a thousand small battles every single day. And just like you take care of your bodies, and your uniforms and your fire truck. We've got to take care of our minds. So whether or not you want to admit it, every single one of you is a fucking badass superhero. I'm glad you decided to come back. Turns out I can use you both. Both? Been on the phone all day. I got your damn funding restored. Well, what do you know? I guess we're gonna be partners still, you and me. Looks like it. Back to work. Thank you.